guys. Happy lunch. How are y'all? Hope y'all doing good. What's you guys this weekend? This is it. Hey, Ohio. I am back. Happy Monday. Thank you, Paula. Denver. Good morning, Miss Sarah. Kansas City. Mississippi. Tad day in the office. So I get to wear my favorite cap. All right. Ohio. Hey, Ellen. Naples, Florida. Uganda. Well, what's up, Liz from Uganda? I'm glad you're on. I'm going to give you two seconds to share this. We're going to get started so I can respect your time and everything. So swipe left, swipe up, whatever you got to do so you can share it. I'll give you a couple seconds. If you're new to my scopes and you have not been on any of my other pair of scopes, why not? First off, no, I'm just kidding. Second of all, I want you to put a one. I want you to put a one in the box. And do that, share it, and I'm going to be back in one second. Heading to a big meeting. Okay. Um, oh, good. I'm glad that that's your sister. I hope that is helping her. And I hope she's getting some benefit out of it. All right. Uh, this song. Okay, so here's a song. I want to show you guys that. Okay, I want if you've never been on my scopes before. Okay. I want to show you guys the song because this is, this is one of the things we're going to talk about. So this is No Longer Slaves. Okay. No Longer Slaves by uh, Bethel Live. It's on the uh, We Will Not Be Shaken uh, one. Hey, Joel, I'm glad you're new to the scope. Okay, get that CD. So how many of you guys, if you're new to the scopes, I appreciate you getting on. If you don't know who I am, I'm Dr. Jim Bob Haggerton. I'm a crazy chiropractor from Texas that's all about function. And I'm all about you guys realizing function um, and realizing what the body is created for. And you're created for health. You're created for 100% perfect all the time. It's What happens is we get into environments and we get into situations uh, and we get into uh, areas in our life that make our body adapt. You know, it creates stress, which creates symptoms, which creates named things, itis, isms, and syndromes, like I talked to you guys about this weekend. Um, and then it ends up creating problems in life. So we're going to um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some. It's not my connection. So you guys are having connections. Mine is clear because I'm not even stuttering. But sometimes uh, Periscope gets a little wanky, and my scopes tend to wreck Periscope because you guys are awesome. I have the best scopers there are. Uh, so I was in Wyoming last weekend, and um, you know we had an awesome time at the Wyoming Wellness Conference, and it was great. Um, and so um, there was a couple of things that came up, and one of these, this was one that kind of came up. I was like, I need to talk about this on Monday because it was a deal that I went, hmm, and I got this word on it yesterday. I said it, and I and I kind of dropped that bomb. I dropped that mic on them, and I was like, ooh, this is something else I really need to cover that I have not covered in a scope before, okay? I do, right, Vanessa? I break the internet. You guys click on Vanessa right there, or release her. She um, is um, totally called to uh, teaching people on essential oils and emotions, which I talked about a lot in um, uh, Wyoming, and she's going to be teaching about that tonight. Uh, and so follow her on that. It's awesome. Okay, so in Wyoming, uh, one of the things that they gave me too, because I got these really cool gifts, were mics to drop. Look at these cool little plastic microphones. Like I'm like, yeah, and then I could be like, boom. So instead of me dropping my typical Sharpie, this is my typical mic, I'm like, what? When I, I give you something, I'm going to be dropping mics, yo. And I only brought two today because they're shipping me the next. Um, did I bring them? Yeah, I got them right here. See, girl? Um, and so they're shipping me the rest. I got like a dozen. So I'm going to be like throwing mics at you. I'm like, Shaka! like tomahawks, you know? So uh, we're going to be dropping these because uh, this stuff is epic. Now, if you've never seen any of my other videos because uh, we teach on health and wellness um, and, you know, we're all about the whole body and how it functions and how to make it function better by getting rid of all the things that are getting in the way, okay? Then go to the website, family-wellness.com. Uh, and you can get to the YouTube channel because I save all of these to YouTube so you can watch them later. Okay, so let's talk about fear. 
You know, of all the things, of all the things that are going to limit you, of all the things that are going to limit you from doing what the Lord has called you to do and for fulfilling and limit you from fulfilling your purpose, okay? I'm going to pull up my website real quick. Fear has got to be the biggest. Like fear is the biggest. Fear is the strongest emotion next to one other. And we're going to talk about a couple of things. But fear is one of the strongest emotions. And it digs way down deep inside your nervous system. And it digs way down deep inside this part of the brain called the limbic system. Because it, there's so much stuff that happens with fear that you're like, I don't want to touch that. And it hurts. And it's painful. And so you'll run from it. Most people will run from it. And they'll recoil away from things that make them fearful or that they're afraid of, right? So fear is uh, the one thing, you know, one of the biggest things that will limit how far you can go in your marriage, how far you can go yourself just on your journey of life, how far you can go in your marriage, how far you can go in parenting, how far you can go in your business, how far you can go at your job. Like fear is the thing that's going to hold you back. Okay. Fear is the thing that is going to limit all of us, right? Um, hold on. So there was a verse. Here it is. There's a verse that our pastor went over this weekend that I was like, I'm bringing that up when I talk about fear tomorrow. In Hebrews 12, it's Hebrews 12, 1. Hebrews 12, 1. It says, it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight, everything that weighs us down, okay? Let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So the, the reason in that verse, I mean, like the reason that the runner in that race can't run with endurance and can't run the race like they're created to run it is because there's these weights on them. Like picture having like a ball and chain on your leg, something that's like grabbing onto your ankle or some person. Like think about like if you have kids and you know how they like to like ride on your foot, try to run a marathon with that. Try to run a marathon with two, three-year-olds, one on each leg. That's impossible. You can never get to the end. You can never run a marathon. James Lawrence, the Iron Cowboy, the man of men, could never have run a triathlon if he had a three-year-old on each leg weighing him down. It's impossible. Now, everyone has different weights. Everyone has different things that's like weighing them down. Okay, there's different things in your life and everyone has different ones um, that are the, the main things or the main things for you. You know, and it depends on whether it's a relationship or a, a health challenge or something else, right? And so everyone has a different weight. Now, in order to run the race correctly, we've got to get the weights off. Hebrews 12.1, to run the race with endurance. It doesn't say to run the race with speed. It doesn't say to run the race with panache because you look good. It says to run the race with endurance. Because why? This isn't the sprint. Like we're not in a sprint. We're in a marathon of life, right? Right? Right, Sarah? We're in a marathon. We're in a, a race to the finish, this journey, this path that the Father's taken us all through to get to the end, whatever that is, wherever he's called us to, and it's going to change. There's going to be hard lefts. There's going to be hard turns. There's going to be hills like a cross-country race. And we just have to be ready for where he leads us and ready to run through it all. But the only way we get to run with endurance, the only way we get to do it and not wear ourselves out... Come on. The only way we get to run with endurance is if we get rid of the weights. The number one weight that you guys are going to have around your ankle is fear. The number one. The number one weight. And if you say that the number one is not fear, then I think you either are not uh, labeling correctly or you're lying to yourself and to me. It's fear. Okay? Fear of a lot of things. Now, there's two types though. And I think that what's missed, there's one type that's missed. Okay, and we're going to talk about this because this is huge. There's two types of fear that we all deal with and that we all have to come in contact with every day. And we all have to battle. That's why it says daily, put on the full armor of God in Ephesians 6 every day. It doesn't say once a month, make sure and put on the full armor of God so that you can like withstand the monthly battles. That's not what it says. It says today, put on the full armor of God so that what? So that you can withstand the attack of the enemy. And then it says in Ephesians 6, like at the end, it says, and after you have done all, after you put on the armor and you fought, and you've done all, after you have done all to stand and to endure and to have endurance, right? 
to stand in it, whatever it is, whatever health challenge, whatever marriage struggle, whatever parenting uh, struggle, whatever, whatever, that doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. It's all the same struggle. It's your valley, whatever that is, okay? So let's talk about these two types of fear, and then let's talk about how to conquer them, okay? Let's talk about it, okay? Here it is. Here's number one. The first type of fear that we all deal with, which is a t completely typical, is fear of the bad. Fear of the bad, okay? Now, if you fear something that's bad, what would that be like? Like fear of what? Give me one bad fear. Somebody throw up a, a fear of something. Yeah, worst case scenario, okay? What's a bad fear? Here's my top list. Death, snakes, children dying. Been there, lived that fear. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, Fear of hurt, fear of your loved ones getting hurt, fear of your kids getting hurt, fear of the kids dying. Been there, feared it, lived it. Fear of pain, fear of grief, especially when you've experienced it, it's a fear because you do not want to go through that again. Fear of regret, fear of disappointing God, fear of being let down, fear of walking in the valley again. And it's not fear of an illness or fear of heights. You're not afraid of heights. You're afraid of falling and dying from heights. See what I'm saying? The fear of grief is paralyzing. That's right, it is. Because you'll do anything to not feel that again. Right? Fear of rejection. Like, because it hurts. Right? So fear, it's not the fear of grief. It's the fear. The fear of any of that, of the bad, is paralyzing. That is a perfect word. It's paralyzing because paralysis, the thing that is, is interesting and devastating about paralysis is you want to move. Like the person who is paralyzed in a wheelchair wants to move their legs, but they can't. They can't. They do not have the neurological ability to move those legs because of damage or because of a severed neurological connection. There's no connection so they can't move through, but they want to so bad. So when you're paralyzed by fear, it's not like you don't want to do anything. You want to. You, like more than anything, you want to, but you're paralyzed. You're paralyzed uh, and you can't. You can't move. Okay? Now, so so that's one. So the fear of the bad, like fear of like, hey, if, if I go to this and, I, and I, um, I go recommend these essential oils, what if someone like tells me I'm an idiot? Or what if someone tells me that, that then they tell me that they don't think they work? Or if, if I like, you know, bring up this issue with my friend or my husband or my, you know, and I approach this thing that needs to be dealt with, what if they hate me after? What if I lose relationship? What if they say something? You see what I'm saying? Like, like what if the what ifs, the bad what ifs, that's the fear of the bad. Okay. That's the fear of the bad. Now, there's one type of fear that you guys never even think about. And you never even think through. So that's fear of the bad. And it's like going through like, what are those what ifs? What are the bad things that could happen, right? What are those bad things? Like, you know, like, like what if I try that new thing? What if I get hurt? What if I, what if I fail? What if I try that race and I want to go do this, this, this marathon and I fail and I can't do it? Okay. The what ifs. That's one type of fear, right? Now let's talk about the second type of fear because there's two. And one of them is really blatant. I mean, it's obvious. Like if I fear my kids, you know, getting hurt and I fear losing another kid because we've already lost one and I know what that feels like, that's an obvious one. Like everybody understands that. Here's the one that people don't understand, that people don't talk about, that they don't, that they don't uh, look at. Fear of the good. You're right. Fear of the good. What if we do succeed? What if we do get better? What if I do get out of that sickness? What if I do make a million dollars? Where's the mic? That's, that's two. What if it does? What if I actually reach my expectations? What if I get success? Okay. What if I get all the responsibility? What if I have a loss of identity because the thing that I've been holding on to my entire life gets better? I'm no longer in poverty. I'm no longer in pain. I'm no longer in whatever, whatever that jersey is. What if I take that jersey off 
and now I'm not playing on that team. Woo! What if I get rid of that jersey and I can actually take it off? And now I'm not, I'm not on that same depression team. I'm not on the fibromyalgia team. And I'm not on the arthritic team. I'm not on the IBS team. I'm not on the poverty team. I'm not on the failure team. And what if it works? What if they're right? Loss of identity. Loss of connection. Loss of friendship. What if I what if I lose a couple friends because they're still stuck over here and they can't feel where I'm going. They don't hear where I'm going. They don't understand where I'm going. They're not on the same bus I am. Or even if they're not, they're definitely not on the same road I am. What if I get to the city I'm going to? Once you get there, stuff's going to go down. And it's good. But it's a challenge. And it's scary. Don't you think that when the Israelites were crossing the Jordan River and they were going into the promised land, they were scared to death? Yeah. They were scared to death. Scared to death. Like, because they knew that when they went in, what if I lose weight and I get healthy? That's right, Paula. What if I can actually move and get around? What if I heal that relationship and now I actually have a father, mother, brother, sister, son? You hearing this? What if? The fear of that is just as paralyzing. Don't you think, like, think about, think about in Joshua 1, when the Israelites were getting rare, re, getting rare? They're not getting rare, I hope not. When they were getting ready to go over the Jordan, and they were, like, standing there on the side, and they're like, okay. And Joshua's like, all right, all the crew with Moses is dead. That's over. We're about to go over. And I stay in Joshua 1 because this is where the Lord's had me for two years, almost three years of this, this scenario and this equation. Two years. You're standing on the brink. You're standing on the bank looking at your promised land over there. Fear of failure would have never got you to the bank because fear of the negative would never get you there. That's why the first group of all the Israelites never got to see it because of the fear of what could have been bad. Oh my gosh. They sent 12 spies into the promised land and he sends them over and he says, I want you to look at it. The promised land, not the dump. Not the prison, not the prison camp, the promised land. God. Sent him into the promised land, 12 guys. That's right. Two come back and go, dude, there's grapes the size of my head. The, the, the watermelons in this place are the size of Volkswagens. Like the, the produce, oh, the crops, the ground. It's amazing. Two guys out of 12. 10 of the guys go, um... There's giants in there, yo. There's some big dudes. Uh, Goliath was the little brother of these guys. Goliath was nothing because that's where Goliath was from. Goliath was a Philistine and he came. He was one of the Amalekites, right? And he came from the old school promised land where the Israelites were going to go into. Those were all his brothers and sisters. That's who he came from, okay? Okay. So those 10, they were like, dude, we're, we're going to die up in there. And the Lord didn't take them into the promised land. And Moses disobeyed a couple of things. None of them got to see it. The second wave of Israelites, the next generation, led by Joshua and Caleb, the only two that saw the potential and saw what the Lord could do. They didn't see the bad, even though it was there. They did not acknowledge it. They still had to go to war. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? Like they still had to go to war. They still had to go in. They still had to slay the giants. There's still work that they had to do, but they weren't fearing that. They were trusting God because they knew what he said and they knew what his promises were, right? They knew what his promises said, okay? And so when they got to the edge of the Jordan, they could see the promise on the other side. The thing that would have ruined it for all of us is if they had had a fear of the success of what do we do get in there? If they were standing on the, think, think about if Joshua had been standing on the bank and he looked over there and he's like, man, he's like, I'm ready. I'm ready to go in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He gets all like suited up and he looks over and he goes, man, it looks good. But what if it really works? Then I'm going to be like the man. Now what? And he sat down and he didn't do it. And he didn't go across. What if he didn't? They would have never seen 
the promised land. Because the Lord said, cross the Jordan. In order to get to the promised land, they had to cross another river. They had to cross, they had to obey, and they had to go through this other thing. He, he parted the Jordan. They crossed over. He said, cross the Jordan, all of you. Get over there. Consecrate yourselves to me. Rise up. Go across. Consecrate yourself. Redeem yourself to me on the other side. And if you do these things, be strong and courageous. Do not vary from what I give you to the left or the right. Don't change it. And if you do what I tell you, then everything your feet touch will be yours. <laughs> what? Everything that your feet touch will be yours. Okay? And that's what he said. That's what he gave them. So they go across. They go over there. They get into the promised land. And they do their job. And they get it all. The only time that they didn't get what they should have got and they got their uh, their rears handed to them in battle was the only time they didn't consult the Lord on it. That they didn't consult the Father in what they needed to do. The second battle. And it was the weeniest group. First battle was the hardest. They asked the Lord, trusting him, and they walked into it. Okay? So the only way, there's only one solution, and it's not what you think after I said all that, I think. That's scary, right? Right. But then you're getting into fear. And fear is not of God. Right? Like, I didn't come to give you a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. That's what the verse says. Like, like the, the, the spirit of the Lord is not a spirit of fear. It's of a sound mind. It's totally different. Okay? Now, there's only one solution to this. There's only one solution to battle fear. And it comes from two different places. You ready? Someone say, well, what? Someone say, yeah. Yep. Are you ready for this? Maybe I should wait and do the next go. I'm just kidding. No, let's do it. There's only one solution. Only one solution to the fear. Love. That's it. Perfect love casts out fear. Now, love. There's two, from two places though. You guys are like, I love, listen to this. Perfect love casts out fear. The only emotion that is a higher frequency that is more intense, the only emotion that is a stronger emotion than fear, look at the science and look at the research because it always proves creation. The only emotion that is stronger than fear is love. Okay? All right. From two places. It has to come from both or you can't conquer it. You cannot get past the giants. You can't get over it if you don't have love coming from two places. Love from above. Love it. Like Dr. Seuss. Love from above, just like a dove. No, I'm just kidding. Love from above. The Father to you. If you don't understand how much the Father loves you, I'll put it up again. Love from above. Okay? If you don't know how much the Father loves you, and you don't let him pour into you, you're not letting him like dump his love on you, and you're not receiving it, because you know he's offering it all the time. If you don't know that, you need to go back and read your Bible, because he's offering it all the time. He's like, here it is. Like, right here. Just take my hand. That's it. Rise up, take my hand, and let me dump it on you. So he's offering it up, right, the whole time. And so he's like, here, just take this. Like, you've got all this, like, look, my burden is light. My yoke is light. My burden is not heavy. Give it up here. Take my hand. I love you 100%. Unconditional love. The only person that's given you unconditional love. And some of you guys can't accept it because you've never seen it. You've never seen unconditional love. And so you've never seen unconditional love from a person. So it's almost impossible for you to imagine unconditional love from a father that you've never quote unquote met. It is extravagant, and it's exceptional, and it's supernatural. Supernatural means it's outside of what you could even comprehend. So that first has to dump on you before you can get to other people, before you can like actually give anything to anybody else, you've got to get filled up yourself. You've got to be able to take that love in to squash that fear because the only thing that's going to expose the fear and turn the light on on the fear, because one of you guys said you got to expose it. Absolutely, but that's not the solution because if you expose the fear and you don't have love, you're going to find more fear because there's no solution. There's nothing to squash it. There's no opposite. If you turn the light on to see all the cockroaches and you don't have something to kill the cockroaches, 
there will be more cockroaches and you will be more scared because you see the cockroaches and you expose it, but there's no love there to get rid of it. Are you hearing this? Like, are you seeing where I'm going? You see this? Like, like, hello, hello, hello. Is this thing on? Okay. So love from above. That's the first place. Love conquers all. The second is love from your village. Love from people. Love from your husband. Love from your wife. Love from your kids. Love from your mom and dad. Love from your immediate community. Love from your best friends. Love from your church family. Love from your work family. Someone. Like someone that's next to you, who's walking on that path with you, who's on that bus with you, loving you. Imperfectly, because the perfect love is from the Father. Imperfectly, but as perfect as they can. Loving you and cheering you on because when you're in that valley and you're riding that bus and that bus starts to sputter and the bus is getting really hard to keep on the road, someone beside you has got to be able to help you drive that bus. That is the two things that are going to conquer all fear. Fear of the bad and fear of the good. Some of you guys are so confident because you're like, man, I got this bad fear thing lit. Like I think nothing. Like, you know, I, my battle's won. I got all this. And then they offer you success. They offer you a perfect marriage. They offer you awesome kids. They offer you all these things. And you freeze because you're afraid of what could happen if you accept the blessing. Just grab it. Oh my gosh. Just stand up, rise up in it, and grab it. And know that God doesn't equip the called. Like, he doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. I'm going to say this again. I'm going to drop a mic. You've heard this. God does not call the equipped. He equips the called. The, ver the, the song I put on here say, he doesn't ask you to come in. He doesn't want you to come in when you're perfect. Like, oh, you can only come in if you have a six pack and this and that, and you're already perfect at business and you're perfect at all this. Don't come to me until everything's perfect. He doesn't say that. It says, just come just as I am, as you are, just get there. Just get there and drop it. Expose it after you experience his love. And you know that you got it because then, then he'll open up heaven on top of you. Are, are you saying it is? It's a leap of faith. It's walking out on a ravine that's, that you have like cloud cover and you can't see anything and you hope there's a drawbridge. But he is enough. You know, I'm going to tell you one little story about Harper, about my son to uh, kind of illustrate this. And then I'm going to, I'm going to let you guys go. So, um, you know, we, we talk to our kids a lot about um, how to hear the Father speak to them and teaching them on, like, praying and stuff like that. And we work with this a lot because we want our ceiling to be there for We want them to experience things that we have never even dreamed of. We want them, we want them, just reach out and grab it. Message me. Message somebody on here. Just grab it. Grab, grab his hand. So we teach them this. So he went to a uh, kids conference, Okay. He had, he had already uh, become a believer. He would already gotten saved. He would already asked Jesus into his heart. Uh, and he was going to this conference. It was a freedom conference for kids. Okay, so listen to this. So he goes to this. Part of you guys have heard the story on this. Part of you guys have not. So he goes to this conference. And before he goes, I said, now look, man. I set Harper down before he went, okay? And I said, look. I said, you're going to be at this thing with a bunch of other kids. And you're going to be talking about all these different things about the Bible and about Jesus and everything else. I said, I want you to listen. And I said, what I want you to do is I want you to go into that room. I wasn't there. He went by himself. Listen to what he says. This is what Harper told me after. This is, an, this is incredible. And I learned more from my kids than anyone. I said, when you go into this room, I want you to ask the Lord to give you one word. One word. I said, I want you to ask him for one word that you can write down for you. That's for you. And I want you to bring it back and tell me what it is. And I said, um, and that's all I want you to do. That's all I want you to focus on. One word. And he said, um, he said, okay. He's, he's serious. He's a real in, like internal, like he thinks through. He said, okay. He said, okay, dad. We fist bumped, high five, I hugged him. I prayed over him. And I said, okay. At the end of the day, I'm going to ask you, you guys, when I tell you this. So he goes to the, he goes to the, the conference called the Kairos for Kids, okay? It's a freedom ministry for kids. He goes to this, this conference and he's in there and part of the day, part of the day they had them draw and paint. Like they had them, 
they had them, what they did is they had them write something on a piece of paper and then paint on it. And so he brings this thing at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I said, I said, Hey, I said, did you do it? I tell you, did you, did you pray for the one word? He goes, yeah. He said, I prayed about it. And I said, okay. And I said, what did, I said, what happened? And he hands me this piece of paper and it's about this big, you know, it's about like this big, like a little bit bigger than postcard size. And it's all wrinkled up. He had so much paint on it. It was almost black. It was just solid brown. There were so many colors. There were so many things involved with his painting that you couldn't see through it. And, and he had written something on it and then painted over it. And I got to say this without like tearing up. This is crazy. And I said, what did he say? I said, what did the Lord say to you? And my six-year-old said, the Lord told me that he is enough. Did you hear what I said? He goes, I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, say it again. And he said, the Lord told me to write down. He, he said, he is enough. I am enough. And he said, so data, six years old, I wrote it down on the paper and I painted over it. And I said, he's enough. He said, yeah. And I looked at his mom and I went. So that's why when I use the hashtag, he is enough. It's for that. It's from the lesson I got from my six-year-old. He is enough for you. He's enough for your fear. He's enough for your failure. He's enough for your poverty. He's enough for your lack. He's enough for your marriage. He's enough for your parenting. There's nothing that you can throw out there he's not enough for. You hear this? He's enough on all of it. All right. I'm going to let you guys go so I don't go like on and on and on and on and on. And that's enough. <laughs> Because he's enough. Now I want you to brew on it and journal it and write it down. What's the thing? What's the fear? What category? Are you fearing something bad happening? Are you fearing something that could go wrong? Or, or are you fearing something going right? Or are you fearing something being amazing? Or are you fearing the Father actually blessing you so you're avoiding him? Even though he's like, he's the hound of heaven. If any of you guys have ever read that, that poem, which is fantastic. And he will find you to give you the blessing. Just take it and own it. Okay, you guys are awesome. Love you guys. Um, remember, health is simple. Function is simple. The journey is very simple. It's just not easy at all. Take care. You guys are awesome. Keep walking. Fight that fear with love. That's it.